You got this, Barrett. I know I have this. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to switch to be encouraging, but it sounded like more bragging. Welcome to Sincast, presented by CinemaSins. All right, everybody, welcome to the Sincast. This is Chris Atkinson from Cinema Sins, joined as always by the voice of Cinema Sins, Jeremy Scott. <clears throat> and from Music Video Sins, Barrett Cher. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. All right. We have a cough and a yes, and everybody's really excited to play this Guess the Goose game, I can tell. I love it. Oops. I love this game. This is being recorded on October 19th. I have no idea when we're going to actually publish it. It'll probably be in November somewhere. Um, 2022. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, it's my turn to host again. Um, and uh, it mm-hmm. will be pitting mm-hmm. Jeremy versus Barrett. Um, I, I'm, I think Jeremy won the last one. He did indeed. Uh, uh, but we, of course, have different rules now, and so the game has changed uh, <laughs> since since but the, the last players time. players are, are the same. <laughs> that's right. That's right. This time, Jeremy and Barrett get sent into the maze. Um, uh, we, to, to recap, and you guys might have to help me with this, now we assign uh, point values to each clue. So the first clue is four points, the second clue is three, the, the third is two, and the last one is one. Uh, should, uh, one of the players want to answer on the four point clue and miss it, then the other person can then take it for three points. Is that correct so far? Mm-hmm. Um, if the player misses the first two, the four point clue and the three point clue, and then it goes over to the other person, do they, does the other person then have they have it for two and and then one or does is where is it one point where it doesn't go back to the other person at all is it's that after two it's at the two point question but if now from what i understand if jeremy answers at four and i don't require another clue to steal i get those four points correct i believe that's right yeah, it because you're be, still on I, the four point clue, right? Yes. Right. But I could, but I could get a next clue and get that. You three could, point you could game. go down to the third uh, and to you, get yeah. the second to get the three point clue. Um, so yes, and then after after if the first contestant has gone through the four and the three and then tries to answer and is wrong, then it's only the other contestant that can that can uh, score points. They can, I guess, go for the three point clue at that point. And then if they miss it, well, I guess if they miss it there, then that's it. We, that's it. That's they, it. They could get the next clue, but they can keep, uh, continue to get the clues correct. afterwards. Okay. Correct. So, uh, I know that's a lot of confusing stuff, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll come, we'll come we'll cross that bridge when we get there or something. I don't know. One we'll of those get out there. We'll figure it out. The weather outside is weather. Yes. <laughs> hey, I mean, if you get eaten by a shark today, are you going to give up surfing? You know, probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you know what? Hey, it's fine. Um, okay, so uh, but now before we get into uh, the the ones that I have prepared for you guys, we're going to flip to see who is going to go first. And um, I guess Jeremy, call it in the air. All right. right. Tails. Jeremy has said tails. It It is tails. Oh, Jeremy, do you want to go first or second? I want to go first to get the humiliation out of the way. All right. Jeremy is going to go first. Chris, are are you going to announce the years as we go or we want to put them on here now? Uh, I can go ahead and tell you the years. Now, I did not do the five year increment thing like we have been doing. Uh, basically I sort of picked random years starting with 1998 and then kind of increasing from there. Uh, so 1998 is going to be your first section. Then it's going to be 2004, then 2006, 2012 and 2019. Oh, goody. I'm excited. 
So I did not do the five year increment uh, this time because I just wanted to do a little bit of something different. Cool, man. Um, uh, so um, uh, I guess we're ready. So 1998, Jeremy, yes, your your movie, yes, the four point clue. All right. It is an enduring myth that the Great Wall of China is the only man-made object visible from space. The wall is narrower than the average highway and is visible only in low orbit from where all manner of other man-made objects can also be seen. 1998. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh. I'll take the three-point clue, please. Three-point clue. When the neighbors are walking arm in arm in search lines, the audio is of footsteps marching in perfect synchronization. However, the people's heads are bobbing up and down out of synchronization, and when their feet are shown, they are walking out of step. Uh, I think it's Truman Show. <clears throat> Truman Show is correct. Jeremy yes. has three points. I almost went Truman Show on the last one, damn it, but I played it safe. How did you almost go for that? How did, what, huh, what, no, what? They went, okay, so it was just the wording of when, when he did the Great Wall thing, it is a myth that the Great Wall is the only blah, 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 blah. Right. I immediately remembered a movie that where somebody says it's visible from space or something along those lines. Um, and I, Oh, meaning that his, his, his bubble is visible from space. Yes, yeah, the, yeah. Tr- the Truman bubble or whatever. Um, and... Uh, the second clue was the search lines, the neighbors in search lines. Cause no, that one, goes, yeah, I understand that one. That first one, uh, that was that would have been a sick pull if you had answered at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other clues on this one were during his first encounter with the Dalmatian, the main character shields himself with his briefcase. However, as the angle changes, his case is down by his side, yet the dog is still in position jumping up the one point clue and you'll notice that i really really went to the you know it's more obvious as it gets into the one point clue and everything when marlin is restocking the shelves he finishes the row with brown candy bars takes two out of that row and turns to walk to his talk to his friend by the way the marlin doing the candy bars thing has is it had at least four or five different entries in the IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> When the camera angle goes back to the view from the inside of the vending machine, Marlon restocks the first row with three brown candy bars. He didn't have any other bars in his hands when he removed the two earlier. Wow. Jeez. Uh, So Jeremy has three points off the bat. I do believe, if I recall, when I wrote these, the first couple should be the easiest ones, but then I started getting a little bit more difficult, but who knows? Who knows? You might, you guys are the sultans of SWAT on this ship. Um, I'm uh, happy to be Babe Ruth. That's right. Except for the, you know, whatever he died from. I think he, I don't know. I think he died of alcoholism or something. Alcohol I think poisoning. it was, uh, I think it was Babe Ruth's disease. Oh, Babe Ruth's Babe. disease. That's right. That's right. It has a, has a lesser known name, but you know. Um, all right. On to Barrett and uh, the 1998 movie. First clue, four point clue. Juliet's blood on the tomb moves around from shot to shot. Next one, please. Three point clue. Philip Henslow is depicted as being constantly in debt, yet the opposite is true. Money lending was one of his professions. The filmmakers knew this. (laughs) You know what's funny about this one? (laughs) This one, when I went through, it had to have been, obviously had to have been the same person. Five or six clues end with, the filmmakers knew this. (laughs) Just to add salt into the wound. <laughs> oh, oh man. my god! All right, we got Juliet on the tomb with the blood, mm-hmm. and then and then we got uh, the the Philip Henlo uh, with money lending, and uh, filmmakers knew that stuff. Filmmakers knew this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll take two, please. The two point clue: In the 1590s, Wessex owns tobacco plantations in America. 
There were neither tobacco plantations nor English colonies in America in the 1590s. The Roanoke Colony at North Carolina, called Virginia at the time, failed in 1587, and tobacco mono monoculture did not begin in Vir Virginia until after 1607. The filmmakers knew this. <laughs> 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 oh god <laughs> oh jeez 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 oh Pete. um there's a lot to to take in over those last mm. two it's very true um well i've got two things knocking around and i think i think it's one of them um but i'm i'm a pussy out and uh take the one please <laughs> i think i know what your struggle is uh the one point clue when Will and Viola are in bed together the morning after their first tryst, the bed sheets are pulled to provide concealment in such a way that only someone not in the bed and off camera could physically do. The filmmakers knew this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been hilarious if it was on this one. <laughs> okay. Oh uh, the, the first one is Juliet and the tomb. Would you mind running down the, the, the other three, please? Yes. Uh, the three-point clue was Philip Henslow is depicted as being constantly in debt, yet the opposite is true. Money lending was one of his professions. The filmmakers knew this. And the two-point clue is, in the 1590s, Wessex owns tobacco plantations in America. There were neither tobacco plantations nor English colonies in America in the 1590s. The Roanoke Colony at North Carolina, called Virginia at the time, failed in 1587, and tobacco monoculture did not begin in Virginia until after 1607. The filmmakers knew this. And, and then the last one was the tryst uh, with Viola. last one is, Will. when Will and Viola are in bed together the morning after their first tryst, the bed sheets are pulled to provide concealment in such a way that only someone not in the bed and off camera could physically do. I am such a fucking dumbass because I'm going to guess the wrong one. Ah, because I'm getting my 1998s all jack -holed. Is it? Okay. All right, just do it. It's the Scarlet Bladder. Jeremy, would you like to steal for one point? I mean, I'll, I'll try. I don't really have any clue here. But if Barrett's Scarlet Letter was wrong then maybe it's the other one. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it because I'm too stoned. <laughs> um, oh, I can, I, I can sell it. I'm getting close. Oh, did it? Oh, oh, did oh it? no. Oh, no. Did Back it? up. <laughs> Cover the camera. Yeah, no kidding. Ah, shit. I probably shouldn't be given too much time here. Um, so I'll just say G.I. Jane. <laughs> <laughs> was it, uh, Chris, uh, since he's, uh, was it the Crucible? Ah, shit. No, no, uh, none of those. Uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm surprised uh, about this one. I thought this one was going to get picked almost immediately um the the struggle that i thought barrett was having was between the movie elizabeth and shakespeare in love which is the answer shakespeare in love uh, is the answer to this one. um so when you said you were debating between the two movies i was like okay it must have to do with the fact that both of these movies came out in 1998 they have some of the same characters um and wow <clears throat> And uh, the the amazingly the uh, the goof in the IMDb does call him Will and not mm. William. I didn't have yeah. to shorten that. Uh, although I don't know if if I had said William, it would have mattered. On this it movie. wouldn't have. Uh, Juliet. That was that was a curveball because Juliet. Of course, you immediately go Romeo and Juliet. Scan the years. Doesn't make sense. Okay, it's going to be a Juliet from some other thing. So my mind mm. was immediately leaving Shakespeare behind. And it never, you know, brought those two circuits together don't you, again. Don't you mean uh, Romeo and Ethel, the pirate's daughter? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's um, crazy. Yeah, well, and, uh, the, 
I guess the tobacco thing <clears throat> kind of uh, screwed me up because that put me mentally back in America. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, well, um, that's, a, that's a real shame. The Crucible came out earlier than that, like 96. Yeah, I think 96 so. 96 is right, I believe. And I think Scarlet um, Letter came out around that time, too. I kept thinking vampire shit, man. Like, I was thinking Interview with a Vampire, one of the Blade movies. Like, for, <laughs> once, you said, once you said Blood and Tomb, I, I just I got so fixated, I couldn't get away. This was, an, this was an interesting exercise for me, was where to put certain clues, because, like, I, I didn't want to... It's not necessarily the easiest that you want to put, like, down low. Sometimes you want to put, like, that one that does... that wouldn't give it away right away without the other clues, like at the, like closer to the top, because then, so the Juliet thing was for me, like that was like, Oh, that could possibly give it away. Right. But I threw it right up at the top because then now you're like, okay, any movie could have Juliet in it. Yep. On to the year of 2004. We are currently at Jeremy three Barrett zero after one round. Mm. Mm. Jeremy. Yes. You're, a uh, clue to your 2004 movie. Okay. Your four point clue. Okay. In the bar, you can see a bottle of Malibu brand rum from 1980. I wouldn't drink that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, Don't drink that. It seems super old. 2004 is, this is not going to be good because I'm not working at a theater at this point in time. I'm not watching a lot of movies. Give me the next clue, please. Your three-point clue. In the beginning, when the bikers are in the bar, you can see a man in the back wearing a Danzig shirt with a skull logo from the 1980s. I'm hoping the bar is prominent in this movie because it's been prominent in the clues so far. Mm-hmm. Um, 2004. Give me the, give me the next clue, please. The two-point clue. When Ed is talking about diversity, the pencils are pretty organized. In the next shot, they are very scattered. <laughs> Ed, man, he's always talking about diversity. He is. It's a big topic for him. Ed. Eddie. Eddie, I need the one point clue, please. One point clue. Pandas were not introduced to the San Diego Zoo until 1987, and no cubs were born until 1999. Is it Anchorman? It's Anchorman. You got it for one point. <clears throat> got the sense Barrett may have gotten that around the three-point clip. Yep. Fucking coin toss. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to fuck somebody every time. Yep. 50% of the time, fuck somebody every time. <laughs> that oh, doesn't that's make sense. very on brand. Yes. Nice. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, all right. Barrett, your 2004 movie. Um, we uh, Jeremy is currently up four to nothing right now. Uh, Barrett's four point clue. In many of the scenes that take place in June and July, the grass is brown. It should be green during the summer in South Carolina. South Kakalaki. Um, I'll take the... Oh, oh. <laughs> Barrett has just been possessed by a demon. Something it looks like paranormal there. activity. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like the girl in the closet from the, the rink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's about to be pulled off frame by an unseen force. Um, okay. Just something flittered in my head, but, uh, it'll be it, interesting. I, it, it's, it's definitely not that. Uh, so okay. yeah, the next one, please. The three point clue for your 2004 movie. The narrator says, and after two years of chasing Erwin Rommel through the North African desert, American forces fought in North Africa from November, 1942 to Mar- to May, 1943, just six months. Would you mind saying that again? The narrator says, and after two years of chasing Erwin Rommel, which I don't know if that's the right. Is that his name? Yeah. Rommel's first Rommel. name is Erwin? I don't know about Erwin, but. I know that Rommel's, I mean, that's so We're weird. talking anyway, about the Desert Fox, right? <clears throat> yeah, that's who I believe we're talking about. It is Erwin Rommel. So. All right. Um, and after two years, two years of chasing Erwin Rommel through the North African desert. 
American forces fought in North Africa from November 1942 to May 1943, just six months. Mm, 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 mm. Next one, please. The two-point clue. When Duke and Allie are eating lunch after he's read to her some, he is wearing his reading glasses. In the next shot, he is wearing his bifocals. Duke and Allie I wish you would guess and get it wrong. I wish you would guess and get it wrong. <laughs> I wish you would guess right now and get Shots it wrong. Shots fired from Jeremy. Didn't you say that 2004 was not a good year for you, asshole? <laughs> I did, and I am. It's my day, buddy. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like Derek Henry today, man. <clears throat> <laughs> I'll go ahead and take the the one point clue. The one point clue to your 2004 movie. In the street scene where Noah and Allie are on their backs, looking at the traffic light, the intersection is marked with crisp white lines, designating the lanes for traffic, parking spots, and cross street pedestrian crossing. Back in the 1940s, most streets did not have these markings. They There may have been a single white line down the center of the street, but certainly not the other markings. Is it the notebook? It is the notebook. Yeah. Here it is on the board. Nice work. Nice work. It is now four to one. You after know what's, two what's rounds. crazy? <laughs> Did you think I'm, of it on the four? That was one of the the things that crossed my mind. That's such a, a hard movie to nail down because there's so many time shifts and there's mm-hmm. so many different like areas and 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 stuff like that. Um, but uh, so, Jeremy, you had that. I didn't even know that you'd seen the notebook. Uh, we sent it. That's mm-hmm. the only reason I ever saw it. And have there not been movies that you haven't seen? <laughs> <that we've sent? laughs> well, yes, uh, but I, I, I was one of the writers on that one. So, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, this was still back in the day when we were the only two writers. I think um, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this one was a fun one to construct because the, James Garner plays Duke because you're supposed to think that he's right. not Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so Ryan Gosling goes by Noah in the movie. And so you're like, oh, this must be some other asshole she met. Mm-hmm. And and then, you know, by the end of it, when, you know, she finally realizes before she forgets in that moment towards the end. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's been going, he, James Garner goes by Duke the whole time. And it's, uh, this was an interesting, I was like, which one do I put first? Do I put the one with the intersection and the light or do I put the one where the guy's named Duke and he's reading to her and everything? So, all right. On to 2006. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. This one. Uh, I'm so nervous about this one. Ooh. Not because I think it's hard, but because I'm, I'm like, I left names in this time, but I'm like, I am. I am sort of kind of like going, do you remember those names? Do you remember them? He named names. If you do, then this is going to be, it's going to end quick. But uh, you know what? I I decided I was going to do it with this one. Fingers crossed. For uh, for the four point clue on your 2006 movie. During the suspect interviews, one of the detectives moves his coffee cup from his left side to his right. In the next shot, the cup is back on the left side. I'll take the next clue, please. Three point clue. When Madeline and Case are walking by the river, a giant clock comes into the background twice. Inside Man? It is Inside Man. Three points. I'm a golden god! <laughs> Do you, what was the connection? The, the character names? I actually got it the, first, the, fir- the very first one. You said interrogation scene, and I went, usual suspects? Nope, too soon. And then I went right to Inside Man for some ungodly reason, but I was too nervous to say it because I needed... But then you said Madeline and Con, Con, Case? Case. And walk by the river. I'm already thinking Inside Man, and I went right to Jodie Foster walking along the river in that movie because whoever Case is, I remember her walking along the river talking to somebody. I believe that's the Christopher Plummer character. I think Um, you're right. Yeah, and um, uh, that just settled it for me. And I thought, I actually thought, as soon as I asked for the number three clue, I thought, you know what, I should have just risked it because the odds of Barrett getting it on the th- third clue are low. Um, statistically, mathematically, not 
against Barrett, I would have done the same thing with Chris. But then once once I thought I had it, I was I thought it was worth the worth the risk. So um, the other clues in this one, the two point, and we'll see if you remember the names of the detectives because this may have given it away as well. When Frazier and Mitchell leave the precinct, they each have their own car. When they arrive on the scene, they are riding in one car. No, that's funny. Um, no, I would. That was, those names would not have done it for me. Who is uh, Denzel's? Uh, I know Defoe is in there, but who is Denzel's partner in that? Uh, um, Tewatel Edgia for. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the last clue: When referring to his exploits in the war, the bank president's lips reveal him saying it was fifty years ago, but the sound has been dubbed to sixty years ago. Huh. Hey, he was a bad so, dude, that Christopher Plummer. Okay. Yeah, Very so this true. would have been interesting Not, if yeah, I had started with something that I thought was the easier part of this, like when Frazier and Mitchell are going blah, blah, blah. That would have been mm. the harder clue. Mm. Um, and then I could have gotten down to the suspect interviews and all that. But I figured suspect interviews are so, I don't know, prevalent in cop movies that that yeah. wouldn't have given away immediately. Right. Um, and of course, there's so many in the inside man one that, that just give it straight away. I was like, God damn it. We're, I want to do this one. I want to do this one. And I <laughs> uh, finally came up with four that I thought were acceptable. But uh, we are now Jeremy seven, Barrett one. Uh, on to Barrett's 2006 uh, movie, his four point clue. During the show where the male lead meets his love interest for the first time. On both sides of the stage, there are statues looking exactly like the two guardian statues found in King Tutankhamun's tomb, not discovered until 1922. Can you read that one more time? During the show where the male lead meets his love interest for the first time, on both sides of the stage, there are statues looking exactly like the two guardian statues found in King Tutankhamun's tomb, not discovered until 1922. The Prestige. The Prestige is correct. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Had to take a gamble on that one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I would not have gotten that on that clue. That was impressive, dude. That puts Barrett back in this thing. It is seven to five now. <laughs> what were the rest uh, of the clues? The, fucking coin toss. The, re <laughs> the remaining clues in this one. The three-point clue. In one of the earlier scenes of the movie, two characters are seen in the dressing room after one of their performances together. One puts on a brown vest and crosses the room, and in the next shot, he is seen pulling it over his shoulders once again. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I had to take the names out of this one. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, the spiderweb-shaped cracks that appear in the glass boxes when characters attempt to smash them indicate they are made of laminated safety glass, a material held intact by a thin layer of flexible vinyl sandwiched between two sheets of glass. Laminated safety glass was discovered by accident in 1903 and patented in 1909, well after the timeline of the movie. Mm-hmm. And then the one point clue, the welded wire mesh embedded in the fence at the laboratory in Colorado Springs was only patented after the events in the movie and would not have been available at the time. I love that movie. Who is the meeting his love interest at the show? Who's that? Uh, it's Christian Bale. Um, Whichever oh one. and rebecca hall yeah whichever it's, one he's playing at the time yeah there's so many love interests because there's the scar joe and then there's the rebecca this hall is the rebecca the hall two. one <laughs> oh, <okay>. um <clears throat> uh but uh let me see what it says on, man good uh, pull there you dickhead <clears throat> good it's pull. funny i saw that light bulb go over barrett's head and i was like he's not he is <laughs> i think it's the first uh, uh uh first clue guess that has been correct in this game actually uh yeah it might be yeah it was just it was just a gamble um otherwise no i got the remember i got the i got the knight's tail on the first clue oh. <laughs> it's a oh, yeah that's right <laughs> uh let's see <laughs> Night's Tale has been coming up either on Netflix or HBO Max or something like that, just staring at me like, we want you to watch this. You should yeah. totally watch this again. Like, uh, oh. Yeah, the original goof says, during the magic show where Alfred meets Sarah for the first time. Oh, okay. 
<clears throat> Lisa didn't uh, call them Angiers or whatever. <clears throat> right. And, like there were a lot of Angier stuff in here and all that. But uh, all right, we've got a game right now. It's seven to five going into the 2012 movies. Um, Jeremy, your four point clue. How many? Wait, th- is this the fourth round? Yes. This is and the fourth a, and round. And there's a total of five rounds? Yes. Okay. Just, just making sure. And you said 2012? 2012. All right. Your four-point clue. When, he, when the president slams his hand on the desk to stop everyone from arguing, he hits his glasses, which move in the front of his book. Two pans later, the glasses have disappeared. Lincoln. God damn. Jeremy is correct. Ooh. Am I making Ooh. this too easy, or are you guys just fucking wizards? Uh, I think today we're wizards. Um, I was really nervous. I honestly was really nervous to say that. Uh, I was tr- I'm trying to play strategically to make the game fun for everyone, and I thought, what, what the hell? If I'm wrong, good luck, Barrett. Um, but it was right. And I knew there was a scene where he got mad at people who were arguing. I don't remember him hitting the table or his glasses. I just remember him yelling, now, now, now. Um, but I took a shot. I was actually pretty nervous to say it. <clears throat> actually, his voice in that movie, it's more like, now, now, now. <laughs> the, I like uh, that scene. Now the three-point clue was, when the president is speaking with Mrs. Keckley on the North Port- Portico, columns can be seen along the north-facing wall of the White House to the president's left. The White House has never had columns along this wall. Uh, The two-point clue. When Robert meets his father after the visit to the wounded soldiers, there is a section of electric conduit emerging from the building in the background. And the one-point clue. When the first lady is arguing with the president to not let their son Robert enlist, she says that he might be taken by a shrapnel shell wound or typhus, same as their son Willie. Willie died of typhoid fever, which is a different disease than typhus. So basically, uh, and and that is a perfect step down thing, by the way, because that would have yeah. really, uh, you know, by the by the end of it, you'd have to. The be... third one is probably where I would have been confident, um, and then the fourth one would have been a giveaway. But this was this was almost <clears throat> literally, you know, year and president, and and you felt good about that. I didn't. I mean, I w- the reason I was nervous is that my years, I'm not good at years. Like as much as Chris is great at that kind of thing or people's ages, I'm the I'm on the other end of the spectrum with that shit. Um, so I just have to try and remember what where I was in life. And I was nervous. I thought that movie was a year or two later because I remember I we sent it and I had I had the DVD Blu-ray and um, I'm like, we didn't even start the channel until the last two weeks of 2012 well so. it's interesting that uh 2012 2013 is the line of demarcation for a lot of <laughs> stuff probably for you guys I'm yeah like, it really is, it really is. And now i did not say god damn it because jeremy pulled farther ahead i said god damn it because i can't believe that my clues were get are getting answered this easily <laughs> After uh, one fucking, I guarantee you, if I was sitting here, I'd be getting all the way to the one point clue. I'm not <laughs> good at this game at all. So, you know, the fact that you guys are getting it after four points, Jesus fucking Christ. That it makes me <laughs> wonder a... if I'm, I must not be good at making uh, uh, questions for this game either. If that's I would not case. have gotten that one on the first one for sure. It would have crossed my mind, but I don't think I would have. All right. Well, it is now 11 to 5, Jeremy, and we would get to the 2012 clue uh, for Barrett's movie, his four-point clue. On the sailing yacht, the protagonist puts the radio device in the right side pocket of his trousers, but when he shows it to the antagonist, he must have taken it from the left pocket because his right hand is holding a gun. Go ahead. Go ahead and answer it, you no, fuck. No, 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 no. I just, I just think that's a funny goof. Uh, okay. I, there's something like knocking around, but uh, I, it, would you mind reading it again, please? Sure. On the sailing yacht, the protagonist puts the radio device in the right side pocket of his trousers. But when he shows it to the antagonist, he must have taken it from the left pocket because his right hand is holding a gun. 
Man, there's an image that, that's in my head. Uh, three, please. Three-point clue. In the Shanghai Tower scene, the terrorist slash sniper is seen operating a manual bolt-action rifle. Right after during the fight with the main character, the gun is shot several times just as if it was a semi-automatic weapon. God, I'm going to feel so fucking dumb. The yacht. <clears throat> I wish you would guess right now and be wrong. I'm kidding. I don't know it. I think I know it, but I don't know. I'm going to fucking come through this fucking screen and Micah hide you. I'm sorry. You. I'm being extra annoying today. I do apologize. I will, <laughs> I will work on it in my next therapy session. I know what I just no, figured out what I, I guessed. No, <clears throat> I, I, I appreciate you. I mean, man, you're feeling it. You're feeling it. I shouldn't apologize for that. I'm like Aaron Rodgers. When he yells at the Bears fans, all my fucking life I've owned you. Did you see that video? <laughs> I, I saw oh, it I saw live, it. and I was like, what did he just say? It sounded like he said something <laughs> pretty awesome. that shit and watched it over and over again, because I thought the, the, the repeats would, would edit that out, because I didn't know if he swore <laughs> or whatever. What's funny is, like, nobody in the stands probably heard that. We heard a <laughs> mic'd up version of that. Right. So they were probably just, they probably just saw like the equivalent of like, you know, when you're seeing talking animals and movies and then it goes to the human's perspective and it's like, <laughs> meow, meow, meow. <laughs> That's awesome. They do that on Frasier with the dog sometimes where it oh, like, yeah. cuts, the, cuts to the dog's perspective and the hu- humans are all like, blah, 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 Treat? <laughs> I'll do the two point question, please. Two point clue for this 2012 movie. When the main character drives his motorbike into the bridge, the scene changes to him landing on the train, the bike magically landing on its wheels upright. Then when the scene changes again, the bike has disappeared, yet the bike should be seen rolling out of control. You got this, Barrett. I know I have this. Shut up. (laughs) (laughs) I tried to switch to be encouraging, but it sounded like more bragging. I love you. I love you. (laughs) <laughs> let's fuck <laughs> I say it. <laughs> let's run this all the way down so this dick munch doesn't fucking munch on my the dick the one point clue for this 2012 movie in the scene where the protagonist is chasing the antagonist in the underground he leaps over the emergency buttons and slides down the escalator panel Initially, you can see the emergency buttons at the bottom of the escalator, which would have broken his slide. However, these disappear as the good guy slides smoothly off the panel at the bottom. All right, so you got the yacht and the the sailing, and then you got the gun, and then you got the Shanghai and the bolt action. Mm -hmm. Um, It turns into an automatic. (laughs) Then you have the motorcycle that, that zips out. Uh, zippity doo da through the the thing, and then the protagonist in an elevator shaft. Yeah, I mean, there's so many action movies bumping around there. The protagonist jumps in an elevator shaft, Chris. Escalator. Um, uh, it's an escalator panel. I'll guess Rogue Nation. Jeremy, would you like to steal? Um, Skyfall. Skyfall <sighs> is correct uh, for one point. Uh, it is now 12 to 5. Now, this all is not lost. All is not lost. There are There is a way. There is a way. But it would require Jeremy being very stupid mm. to mm. forbear it to get back into this. But we're going to play this final round uh and see what happens so what would i uh how would i do that i will not tell you but there's a there's a way okay. that barrett well, could come back into this. tell me later yes i will tell you later okay that's all I uh uh jeremy's 2019 movie a four-point clue In the ambulance scene, you can hear, very faintly, the chirp associated with a trunked radio system. This kind of dispatch was not in use even in major metropolitan areas until at least the late 80s or early 90s. I'll take the next clue, please. Three-point clue for this 2019 movie. 
U.S. late-night TV talk shows are recorded during the day and aired late at night. The talk show would never have played live or been broadcast as depicted in this film. Joker? Joker's correct. Fucking point Oh, man. God, you knew damn. that one? Did you yeah. know it on the first clue, Barrett? No. No, I don't think so. This uh, one was... That, that, that uh, three-point clue was even more obvious in in its in the way they wrote it because it talked about the murder on the talk show oh, happening yeah <clears throat> so i took that out uh at least but uh, the two-point clue when the main character goes to the public theater to confront thomas there is a shot on the stage the shot of the stage with two speakers visible on either side of the stage these speakers are modern rigged speaker arrays which were not yet used in the 1970s hmm uh, uh one point clue was as the main character is standing on the cop car after the crash with the ambulance someone in the mob is holding a bat right in front of him the shot changes and there are no bats in the air in front of him anywhere all right interesting i would have gotten that hey uh so jeremy would you have gotten skyfall after the shanghai clue uh that's one. that was the second clue right yeah Yes, that's that's when it, that's when I got it. That's when I got my guess that that was it. So um, I mean, I'm decrying my coin toss, but you've only. I mean, I you know you, you would have yeah you would have won either way, but uh, yeah, let's let's play for pride, baby. Yep. So see if you can uh, get this uh, closer in the end here. It's fifteen to five now. This is the 2019 uh, movie for Barrett, the four point clue. When the main character returns from Europe, someone is sh- someone is shown unpacking mugs, white with different colored ink. But the same mugs are shown before in the first half hour of the movie. I'm staring at my diploma right now. And <laughs> telling telling me that, hey man, you should be smarter than this. <laughs> <laughs> Your diploma talks? That's amazing. <laughs> it's only with the I'm I'm microdosing these days. <laughs> Main character gets back from Europe. They pull out mugs, uh, white as one does. <clears throat> uh, but they were shown earlier in the movie. I'll take a three point clue. I want to get this right. Three point clue: When the date shown is a Sunday in February, KHJ is playing on the car radio with Robert W. Morgan on the air. Morgan didn't work on Sunday usually, as he was at the, he was the morning drive jock Monday through Friday. Oh. No. <laughs> I'm going to kill this motherfucker right here. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. No, I'll take two, please. Two point clue. No cameras are seen in the opening interview, although they're front facing both the main characters and the interviewer. It'd be funny if you, if it was Joker again. <laughs> oh man. No, we should make a rule that you, you shouldn't give the same movie yeah, twice in the just, same game. You can that would be a dick four move. Four separate goofs. The exact same movie. <laughs> that would be a dick move. Oh my god. I feel like I feel like I've definitely seen this movie. I'll take one. One point clue. The theater marquee shows Lady in Cement 1968 with a GP rating. The GP rating wasn't introduced till early 1970. Also, star Raquel Welch's name is misspelled dicks i know uh shock jock or jock jock with the shock there is there is no shock he is there a jock is no shock. he's, to, he's mm-hmm. just a jock and they didn't say anything about new york did they say anything about new york in that clue no nothing about new york in this is it um <clears throat> is it end game jeremy do you know this one well, once upon a time in hollywood yeah that's what it is <clears throat> um what what gave this one away to you um, I didn't, you, you, the curveball was the first clue and that was an excellent choice because character getting back from Europe is not something I associate with that movie. It was the clue after that. What was the third clue or the three point clue? The three point was when the date shown is a Sunday in February, KHJ is playing on the car That's radio. The one. <clears throat> That's the one. Cause I know radio stations that start with K are west of the Mississippi. Um, and um, Tarantino is exactly the kind of guy who would pay tribute to some kind of a 
DJ that was famous in the 60s or something. I don't know. That's where it became my guess. I wasn't sure until you went to the next one with the character's interview in the beginning and there's no cameras visible. Um, Shaking my head. Jeremy's a goddamn genius, guys. You didn't know mm. this, but he's a goddamn genius. He fucked well, he fuck started my whatever, fucking questions. Yeah, whatever <laughs> weed you were smoking this morning, man, you should distribute to everyone. See this? Well, this is this is Jeremy fucking my entire <laughs> trivia quiz today. <laughs> it you was literally the, didn't know one. Is that is that correct? That was the only one. The ninety eight. What was the ninety eight one that I had? Oh uh, yeah, the I uh, guess G I Jane Shakespeare in love. <laughs> Shakespeare in love was the only one that nobody got. You literally knew every other movie at very various points. Well, I'm telling you, quiz. the weed I smoked was the my brother's family has been here for several days, and I haven't been doing much smoking at all, and so. You take some time off, it gets a little more potenty, and I think that just awakened my my stimulator. Well, <clears throat> I all right. Well, got that was in the like, ass. yeah. Barrett did <clears throat> get fucked in the ass. The uh, final would be sixteen to five in this one. Uh, uh, sorry, Barrett. I thought this was going to be harder for everybody involved, um, <laughs> but no, uh, uh, it's uh, I've just no, been put on notice. Stuff. I've just been put on notice. The next time I host, I'm going to go fucking deep dicking on you guys because oh, this, is, man. This, this was this was humiliating to, to have clues that easily gotten that I thought were hard in some way. <laughs> um, you know, that just punishes Barrett as long, along with me is all I'm saying. But I guess it's an even playing field. The deeper the dick goes. <laughs> <laughs> It goes that deep for both of us. I guess. I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, maybe I'm just uh, having a good day, man. I don't. I wasn't trying to humiliate nobody. Oh, congratulations, no. man! No, you, uh, you did. I, I was the one that was uh, humiliated. I should have uh, gotten on the board with at least once upon a time in Hollywood. Now I, have, I've only seen Skyfall once. So uh, of all of the action movies that were bouncing around my head, that could have been one of them. But like, I that's just one that, that well, wasn't some of there. these i'm like i know i know that you guys have watched some of these several times and i tried to keep that balanced in there didn't try to put too many like i've heard barrett talk about this movie a bunch of times and then like i've heard jeremy talk about this movie a bunch of times i tried to kind of balance those and everything and jesus christ no we've um, seen all of these movies um uh you know at least once Oh, the next time we play, it's going to be a flip flop of this. Yeah, I feel yeah. like my <laughs> the coin flip has definitely affected my performance, but it's a coin flip. What are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? <clears throat> yeah, uh, good and job, all Chris. I'm, no, I'm, those were those no. Were good all I'm saying is, when you spend an afternoon doing these things, <laughs> and you think that these clues are something that's going to stump you. And then suddenly, uh, you know, fucking Einstein over here comes or, you know, Leonard Malton over here comes over with like, you know, oh, I was thinking about this movie after this one tiny detail that nobody ever fucking thinks about. And then like and then just absolutely sticks his arm, his entire arm up your ass to get that three point clue. <laughs> It's like imagine being like the the writer on Jeopardy who who wrote the final clue for this mm -hmm. episode, and as soon as the host gets done reading it, all three contestants start writing immediately, and you're like, God damn it! They all knew it instantly. When I was damn. writing these, I was like sitting there going, Who do I go to to figure out if these names are 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 like you? Because know, I can't go, I can't even subtly go. Hey, does anybody know who the what the names of the uh, characters in Inside Man are? And then you not just go over and look up, look it up, or whatever. And I can't just go to any random asshole on the street. Although I tried, man, I tried. Hello, random, random asshole on the street. Yes. Could I ask you a question? Lend me your you, ear. Yeah. Do you know the names of the detectives in Inside Man? <laughs> Off the top of your head, sir, but don't don't go to the IMDb and cheat. <laughs> um all right. So uh there is another oh, edition of Guess the Goofs. Guess uh, the Goofs. Guess the Goofs. And uh the next Guess time this happens, Guess it will goofs. be Barrett hosting again. Uh, with Jeremy and I facing off against each other to the death, to, to the, the death. death. That's always a fun one uh, to to have you guys. It's always a close match between the two of you. Um, 
So yeah. That's well, it will fun. also be the first time that we've done it with this point system. Uh, so, you know, that changes a lot of things. Like the stuff that we thought was close before isn't as close now because if people get it on these high point clues, then it changes the entire dynamic of it. So I will have some um, fun ones. I'll tell you that much. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of porn thrown in. Mm-hmm, right, it's mm-hmm. going to be some documentaries. Nice. Uh, it's going to be some porn uh, and documentaries. Now that porn documentaries. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So here's the thing. It's going to be documentaries about the porn industry. And then it's going to be mm-hmm. porns parodying documentaries like March mm-hmm. of the Dick ones. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like you better not, you better not have a Michael Moore parody, uh, porn parody and locked and loaded bowling for my balls. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, exactly. What? Balling for Columbine. That's just not good. That's not good. Poop dreams. Yeah. Poop <gasps> dreams. Poop what the dreams? fuck kind of, Porn are you watching? Dude? <laughs> Roger and Melissa and me. <laughs> Fuck! We just unlock something very disturbing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know that's out there. You know there's a doc. You know there's there's a porn <coughs> called Poop Dreams out there. No, no doubt. I gotta about find it. out. Damn. I am not mm-hmm. typing it. I'm mm-hmm. not typing it. Mm-hmm. You probably you probably shouldn't. You're right. Uh, we've got uh, some time here. Do we have any recommends and warns? Totes amaze balls. They're great. It won the Academy Award. Oh, for what? For best movie ever made. I'm gonna go first because I just got fucking railroaded, and mm-hmm. because I really want to talk about this movie. Uh, mm-hmm. We had a chance to watch it. Chris and I had a chance to watch this movie. Uh, fairly recently. Um, it's called Fauci. Uh, yeah. Talk oh. about a documentary. Uh, we, uh, certainly not uh, a filthy documentary as we were just talking about. <clears throat> this is a documentary that, that's currently on Disney Plus as part of, I think, Nat Geo um, uh, streaming on that service. And what a fascinating documentary. Uh, this was done... Uh, Without Fauci, Anthony Fauci, who, if you don't know now, is the director of the National Institutes of Health in America, um, serves on the boards of several international health organizations, um, and is kind of the face of the whole COVID-19 pandemic outbreak response, vaccine rollout, that kind of thing. So Anthony Fauci is, is the star of this, and it's very, very, very... I would say almost unfettered access to this guy. Mm -hmm. Uh, You see him, you know, on the the news program, you see him everywhere. He is really the guy that's, that's trying to get this message out there about, you know, best practices, CDC guidelines and all that stuff. Um, A lot of people have assigned this vitriol to him, which there's, there's uh, some of the, the documentary goes into, uh, but this was uh, Janet Tobias and John Hoffman that directed it. What's interesting about this is um, it takes place about half during the uh, the pandemic, uh, the current pandemic uh, of COVID-19 and everything. And the other half, surprisingly, to me at least, uh, takes place during the uh, HIV AIDS pandemic. Um, oh, wow. uh, I can't, I don't remember whether it was a pandemic or epidemic. It was some sort of demic. It was very bad, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, in the uh, in the mid eighties to uh, to to all the way to the mid nineties, um, and it shows how tireless uh, this guy and his team. You can't just describe all credit to uh, to one person. Uh, really went into figuring out treatment, uh, figuring out the the humanitarian uh efforts that went into the hiv aids epidemic uh and then eventually towards the uh the uh the the cocktail uh the azt uh treatment that has been so successful uh over the years now um and it gives it gives a lot of context uh to this guy uh and and not only you know his response of course which is which has absurdly become a flashpoint 
in, a, in especially in the U.S. Uh, right now of you know pandemic response and somehow politicized. It shows you the context of how this guy has worked his entire career uh, through this. Um, it is a it is a moving documentary. It is very, very, very well done. Uh, we've mentioned some documentaries fairly recently uh, on the show that may have had good subject matter, but are not necessarily well done documentaries. This is a very well done documentary. Um, the The interesting part about this is that uh, Dr. Fauci did not receive any uh, uh, compensation for this that I know of. Um, and he didn't have any editorial control. Having said that, it'll come off as, as very uh, hero worshipy. Uh, that's not necessarily a, a terrible thing uh, when it comes to to this thing. Um, and the last thing I'll say about this is that you, you, if you if you watch American television, um, certainly you know on the the Sunday shows and the news shows and stuff like that, uh, you'll see this almost unflappable dude that's just really trying to. Uh, to serve the public and just give the facts and all that stuff. There are a couple moments in this documentary where he shows himself, uh, both when he's talking about uh, certain patients, uh, when he's talking about his family, uh, and then when he's talking about the response that he's getting to the current, um, the the current you know, uh, blitz of information that he's trying to get out there. It is a fascinating documentary. I would recommend it to anyone on Disney plus slash Nat Geo, uh, called Fauci. Uh, Chris, mm. now you, you saw <clears throat> this. What did you think about it? Uh, same, same. I, I, anytime there is a documentary about any one person, I am always, uh, a little bit leery of yeah. the, the angle that they take. Um, the one moment where they actually even give any kind of criticism to him is when it's his daughter talking about how, or maybe it wasn't his daughter, but somebody who worked with him saying, I don't think he could, he should have come out and said, don't wear masks right yeah. off the bat, because yeah. that's the big thing that people always fucking hang on when they are like, look at what a dumbass Fauci is, mm. is because given his information at the time, he said, you don't need to wear a mask for this and, and everything. I think they should have probably leaned in a little bit more to some of those criticisms and tried to either curtail them or at least acknowledge them uh, you know, as something that maybe he shouldn't have done. You've also got to, uh, put in perspective, um, that when you're a public figure and people are looking for answers, you're going to give them the answers that you have at the time. And, uh, especially Americans, I don't know if everybody around the world is like this, but whenever you say the thing, everybody believes the thing. And then anything that changes must be some part of some like you're you're a failure in some way you're a, a dickhead for even suggesting this the first time and everything and everybody who uh, was trying to figure stuff out around march of last year should have realized that there were some things that we were going to find out about this virus that uh were going to be different from what we heard in the first place Yep. And and instead, everybody took the first word as the only word. It's why when somebody publishes a, an article about something and it turns out to be wrong later, they've done a whole bunch of damage doing that. Um, you yeah, know, even the, if they issue a correction, even if they issue a correction, yeah. because everybody looks at the first thing and you, you'll you see years later, people going, oh, that person did this and that. Like, no, they two weeks later, they found out they didn't do that. What, why haven't you gotten this message? Because <laughs> people are ign ignorant of that stuff. The stuff I found fascinating about the Fauci documentary is uh, that he was under fire during the HIV AIDS uh, thing because homosexuals were coming out and saying, you don't care about us. Uh, you were, you're, you're not doing anything to help us. You want us to die and all that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, he, he's sitting there going, well, we're, we're science is slow. It's hard to come up with an, a magic cure for anything that comes up in, in the time that you want it to happen. 
Um, and it took 10 years for them to even think about AZT. I believe mm-hmm. like they had been working on something forever. They didn't even know what it was for a couple of years. I believe it was like, uh, they were, no, they, they were didn't. still and he trying very, to study what it was. He was very honest about it. He was like, you know, we don't even know what we don't know. Mm-hmm. And that's a, such a scientific principle that, you know, having been in the world for a while, like that's, that's just normal parlance, but that's not certainly marketable. And you could see the same or, or similar vitriol against him. I mean, they had effigies of him uh, back mm-hmm. in the, uh, in the eighties, they had this, I forget the group that was, that was really protesting uh, him, but I mean, they went after him personally mm-hmm. uh, because he was a higher up. I don't think he was the director of the NIH at that point, but he was close. He was up in the administration and he mm-hmm. was the head of the HIV AIDS response. Yes. Uh, so, but, but then you get, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but then you get an interesting resolution between those people that were protesting him and, and him and his response uh, to them. Yeah. Um, so, uh, that, and, and then he, he, the, like he, I think his daughter is asked, uh, she goes, I went, I went to my dad and I said, is this, any this current thing with the COVID-19 and your criticism here, is that anything like the AIDS, uh, criticism? And he's like, it's, it's a completely different fucking world today. Meaning that it's, it's complete, so much worse, it's way worse. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, that that's the thing that he has to deal with. And, um, and then they, they, they point out too, that it seemed like everybody was sort of on board with what Fauci was saying until Trump said something about hydro, uh, was it hydroxychloric? What is it? Hydroxychloroquine. Hydroxychloroquine. Yes. Uh, when he brought that up and said that it works, Fauci had to come up to the mic and say, well, it's anecdotal. Uh, and so the idea that he came in with this rebuttal about hydroxychloroquine, uh, but suddenly put him in everybody, you know, anybody who was ready to put Fauci in their sights were, were ready then because he, which is, yeah, which is funny because I I believe the question was asked either directly to him or Mm. Trump said, Oh, well, we'll turn it over to Dr. Fauci at this point. It was like, mm. no, man. <laughs> yeah. And it was, it, I mean, it wasn't a, a crazy answer or anything like that. It wasn't anything like, oh, no, I disagree with this asshole. No, like he, yeah, he can't. Very mild. He was like. That's the, that's the problem, right? Like he said, he says something very calmly and, and, and it's, you know, it's not even that much of a rebuttal. It's just saying, hey, that's anecdotal. We don't know yet, you know. It could. I mean, he's basically saying there's a chance, I guess, that it could be it could work. But he's not saying that either because you don't want to say that mm-hmm. because that's when everybody starts going out and buying, you know, hydroxychloroquine because they think it's going to work. Um, but that was a that was a, a very interesting and well done documentary for sure, no doubt about it. Jeremy, I think this would be right up your alley. I actually uh, was going to suggest when I sent that email yesterday, I didn't realize it's already on Disney Plus to stream. Oh, um, but I, I think it's, I think y- you would find it fascinating. Uh, the way that it's done, it's, it's a lot more hands off than what we've seen. I think Chris recently, uh, with the documentaries, I think there are a couple of questions that were asked off camera. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's to elicit emotion. One of them is, is, is about a, a former patient, uh, that Dr. Fauci had, um, that he, that he has an unexpected reaction to. And there's a follow up off camera, but I don't, I don't think that's a ploy. I think that's that's literally uh, in the service of showing, you know, w- a well-rounded picture of of this human rather than just, you know, a head that you see talking uh, mm-hmm. on the news programs. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Jeremy, you got a recommender one? I am also going to recommend a documentary that I saw recently called Free Guy. Ah, <laughs> the documentary Free Guy. Yes, I've been hearing about this. Um, look, I told more than one friend when those trailers started hitting. Mm-hmm. 
I have a bad feeling about this. I think I even said it on the market. Yeah. 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 That was back in 2015 when those uh, trailers started. Yeah. Right. Actually, actually 2014. That was 2014. That's right. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So (laughs) it did really well. Um, I know the general audience population uh, mostly enjoyed it. Uh, Critically, I think it's hovering in the low 80s somewhere on Rotten Tomatoes. And of course, my brother's family is here. And whenever we get together, we like to watch movies together. But, you know, as he's got kids across, well, he's got an 11 year old, a 16 year old, and an 18 year old. So the two older ones can watch stuff that the younger one can't. Um, so, in an effort to find something that was suitable for everybody, we were looking at, well, what's new? What can you watch now? And um, <clears throat> I thought, from a Google that free guy was on Disney plus for free. Um, it's not yet. It is in the UK bastards. Mm. Um, so (laughs) I, I rented it on Amazon prime for five bucks or whatever. And turned out the younger one didn't even watch. She went into her own room and watched her own shows. Um, so we could have watched something with a lot of F bombs and shit. Mm -hmm. Um, listen, I laughed so much during this movie. Mm -hmm. I, I think, for sin's purposes, there's a lot there that they just gloss over for the sake of both the humor and the heart of this movie. Uh, and there's kind of a surprising little bit of heart at the end. Um, you've seen this, Barrett? No, I'm going to watch it tonight, <clears throat> if you can believe it. Oh, with your kid? Yep. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that Ryan Reynolds can sometimes be... If if he's not great in my eyes, it's because he goes a little far in a certain performance. That's why he's perfect for Deadpool, because Deadpool is over the top. Um, and in this movie, he's almost restrained. Mm. Like, most of his humor, it has a very Lego movie vibe. Um, and mo- he's very much like Emmett in Lego movie where he's mm-hmm. like, Oh, hello there, goldfish. Hello mm-hmm. there, police officer. Oh, mm-hmm. oh my. And half of his best jokes are whispered reactions to things that have just happened. Um, and it is such a unique premise that they mine humor from all this unexpected stuff that movies haven't done before, because no movie has ever been about an NPC in a grand theft auto style game, realizing he's a computer player, like, and, trying to change his own course um loved it loved it Mm -hmm. Uh, is it perfect no maybe not but there there aren't very many jokes that missed for me um and i was shocked how often i was laughing really shocked so uh big recommend my whole family loved it yeah there's elements of they live in this too and they even yeah they even have a moment where he's trying to uh, give Lil Rel Howery his glasses so that he can see the reality of uh, the world around him. Uh, Do they get into a fight that lasts they like don't, 13 minutes? They don't. <laughs> I was waiting for it, actually. Uh, it's more, Lil Rel Howery is more resisting, uh, and, and, he, and Ryan Reynolds is just kind of like, uh, you know, okay or whatever. But I think he ends up getting on those glasses on him. No, he doesn't. He never gets those glasses on him. Um, because, uh, but, but every time some uh, character in this, in this game reality experiences something different, it changes their thought process and everything. Cause once Ryan Reynolds starts going around and like stopping bank robberies and all this other stuff, all the characters in the game start doing different things that the people above who have created the game, we're not expecting them to do. Um, so there are there's some uh, there's some funny moments around that too. Uh there's uh Taiki Wakiti is in this as mm-hmm. basically the ba- the bad guy. But there's this there's a lot of unexpected humor from him because and I don't know if he's just naturally funny, but there's this one moment where he lays down on the floor and is giving a lecture to all of his employees around him, and then he does one of those handspring jump ups but he completely fucks it up and just lands back on the floor and goes ow and then like stands up like a proper person it's fucking hilarious it's, it has no. nothing to do with the plot of the movie i am um 100 percent certain taika ytt is is uh naturally that funny because everything yeah. he's everything i've seen him in what we do in the shadows and uh you know and just making that thor ragnarok movie and uh you know he's I, I, he's he's got to be a, a funny dude to be around. Constantly. Mixed, he 
so the worldwide gross was three hundred two million. Uh, domestically, one oh eight uh, or one oh nine uh, million, which is amazing, especially um, you know considering the 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 era in which it came out. Had this come out pre pandemic, which it was supposed to come out pre pandemic, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. Or or it was it was scheduled or, and then I think the ended up during and, yeah, yeah twenty twenty yeah. was when it was supposed to come out. Do you think this would have? Uh, and again, I haven't seen it, but do you think this would have really taken off even more than that uh, if if it had come out um, under the best of circumstances? I think so. I, I can't remember. Was this one? One that had at home premiere access where people could pay nineteen ninety nine to Disney and watch I it think, at home. I think this came out at a time where Disney said, "I'm gonna we're gonna come out with this movie theaters only," mm-hmm. and this and is that was, and it came right after the Black Widow stuff had come out. I don't know if it had anything to do with that, but I remember distinctly that th- movies started coming out in theaters only more often at that point. After the but Scarlett Johansson the Black Widow. Like there's more people going to movies now than there were when Free Guy came out because we, we just, I think there was less of the country had, was ready to take that step at that mm-hmm. point. Um, <clears throat> would be interesting but, to see if it had, if it would have done as, as well uh, because, um, you know, it didn't have a lot of that marketing that came out in the, in the past few months before it mm. came out where it was they were embracing their their uh the fact that they were bought out by Disney it was a Fox movie at <laughs> one point uh they were doing those little Deadpool promotions and uh you know doing those jokey you know inside joke type of things with Ryan Reynolds and there was one with Taika Waititi as well uh where I think he's playing Korg uh, from, yes. Yeah. 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 So maybe it would evened out. Uh, maybe it would have been uh, about the same. <laughs> and it just well, been and again, a release. I wasn't the I wasn't the only one saying of the trailers. I have a bad feeling about this. Maybe it wasn't marketed very well. Um, in terms of you know what they chose to show in the trailer, because I I had at least two other people tell me. I don't think this looks very good. And I was like, yeah, no, I agree. Uh, so I don't know. It looked like I, I was, fare. I was uh, on the record of saying that I don't think this will be very good, but I really want to see it. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's one of those type of movies. Uh, I, 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 those type of movies are just, I don't know. They're sort of warm blankets for me. The, there's a sort of anything goes attitude to it. Mm. Also, uh, I, I love me some Jodie Comer. You know, she's having a moment because she's mm-hmm. in that the last duel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Damon and Affleck have been singing her praises as mm-hmm. they do media for that movie. She's charming as hell in Free Guy. Yeah, she is. But that's the first time I think I'd seen her or at least noticed or well, seen her. It was the first time I big. had seen her. She's in some TV show that people love. Um, Party of Five. Yeah, party yeah. of five. <laughs> yeah. five. She was the youngest one. She was. She was the youngest one. Yeah, yeah. She, she replaced. She replaced Lacey Chabert. <laughs> <laughs> Lacey Chabert was just constantly getting replaced by other actresses. Um, well, the last duel really, uh, really, really tanked to the box office, and there's that's a complicated issue, eh? Yeah. God, I'm already seeing everybody going, oh, we can't make movies for adults anymore. And I'm like, my God, there are so many factors here. Mm-hmm. Like, that's it's yes, so complicated. It got, <laughs> it got very good reviews. Mm-hmm. That does not always mean people should have flocked. Mm-hmm. Why didn't that? Why didn't the average American listen to the movie critics who the average American disdains, by the way? Um, I thought that movie looked goofy as hell because of the haircuts. And yeah. I, I consider myself. I, I, I'll give the movie a shot even before I knew it was great. I was still going to watch it, but not everybody will. When something looks a little silly, and it doesn't tell you in the trailer the nature of the film. Yep. I don't want to give away the nature of the film, but from what Dicer said, um, they could have marketed it to at least let people know. There is more than haircuts, old timey dialogue, and sword fighting. There and is dueling. yeah, yeah, more going on here. Uh, so I'm excited to see it, but I am so tired of the. Guess we just have to make superhero movies now because you know what? 
Ridley Scott and Matt Damon made a non-superhero movie for adults called The Martian several years back. It was one of the highest grossing movies of the whole year. So just make you know keep making them. They're not all going to be hits. Hang on, did. what is what is this called? The 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 Mar- the the Venusian? Yeah, what it's it called, called the Ur- Uranusian. The mm. oh the oh that's right, the Uranusian. The uh, the show that Jodie Comer was on was called Killing Eve. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, that is a highly popular show. Everybody yeah, loves that, that. I have not seen, but I will watch now because I I like her. Um, on uh, my uh, recommend and warn, I'm going to recommend. You know, I was hinting at this a week or two or however many weeks ago it was when this uh, podcast finally comes out. <laughs> uh we're the free the, uh, guy this episode is the free guy of Sincast episodes <laughs> yes yes it is um but uh only murders in the building uh which could have which may have uh i mean it on here it's october 19th it's actually the day that the finale came out uh which i watched um and um so now i've seen all 10 episodes of uh only murders in the building and uh i can highly recommend it um Mm, this is on hulu right it's on hulu it's uh it's uh it's just it's exactly what you want from um like especially comedy murder mysteries um where they constantly throw different suspects in your eyes and you're like oh how could it not be this person oh my god they're so you know they're they're on the right trail blah 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 and they constantly are finding new evidence during each episode and then you know the premise of this is that martin short and steve martin and selena gomez all kind of sort of accidentally into each other um uh want to solve this case they're all they all believe that the person who they think it's they think it's a suicide uh they think that uh it's a murder and uh and so they are they start a podcast which we don't really see in like it's not real i mean yes they're making a podcast but it's not like uh that's a huge part of this show it's not like the the halloween reboot (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's not like where you're sitting there like you, you see them talking into microphones or they're at a table talking about the case or anything you're just i think is supposed to assume that anything you see in that episode is going to be something they talk about later and everything but uh this is the best i've seen steve martin and martin short in a long time wow uh this Ooh. is sort of a comeback vehicle for them uh you know their executive producers along with selena gomez by the way who's mm-hmm. also a producer in this as well uh i selena gomez is of course in a stage of her career where you you're not exactly sure you know what it, where is she as an actress where is she uh you know because we've seen a big pop career happen in the last 10 years and of course you know, the wizards of waverly place and all that people know that but like uh and of course they know that ethan hawk movie called uh what was that what's that ethan hawk movie was she was in oh the oh. one with a rad car chase on it yeah right. yeah uh, it had a had name a... it had a name of a movie it had a name that another movie has i can't remember what it, it does i can't remember the it. italian I've job it twice <laughs> the italian <Yeah>. job <laughs> selena gomez get away get, get away. away yeah yes. no she you're absolutely right i i have high expectations for this lady because i think she's moved her music career into a wholly different space mm-hmm. i haven't seen this show uh but sh- she showed enough kind of self-awareness in in a movie that i like the uh the jarmish zombie movie the uh <laughs> uh only d- lovers dead alive dead. <laughs> I, dead, I only lovers it. left in the building it's, there's no lovers in that um the dead don't die the dead don't die yeah yeah uh yeah seeing that was a big uh was a big thing also spring breakers even though she's um not one of the prominent ones i guess because she leaves but, yeah she's of. the good girl and but yeah. she's she's terrific in it yeah but 
in this show, I don't know what it is. I, I think this is, this is her sort of her, uh, her big break as an actor possibly. It's not like she's just overwhelmingly great or anything. It's not like I'm sitting there going, Oh my God, put her in all the movies that Kate Blanchett does. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, uh, it's just that she's, uh, there's some moments in here where she's really funny. I love, I love the, the way she, um, she delivers the line, the fuck in one of the episodes, nice. uh, you know, um, she, they, they make her where she's kind of, she's not like glamorous. Like you usually see her in, you know, music videos and things of that nature. She seems like, you know, down, she seems more down to earth in this. Uh, but I love all this. I love all the episodes I got. I told you guys about the one where it's all from the deaf guy's perspective yeah. and there's no dialogue that it, there's no heard dialogue in the entire episode. Um, uh, but you know, there's a, just a, there's a great cast in this, uh, uh aside from them, Amy Ryan is in this, hmm. um, you know, you, I was hoping for an Amy Ryan Nassance. I love mm-hmm. me some Amy Ryan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sting shows up for a cameo where of course, Martin short does this great uh, thing on the elevator where he, where his, where Sting's dog is, is uh sort of attacking him and Martin Short's like, don't stand so close to me. Um, <laughs> um, so oh. there are, there are a number of, uh, of, of great moments, especially for such well-respected comic actors. And this is the coming out party for Selena Gomez. I can't wait to see what she does in the future. Uh, it comes to a satisfying conclusion, although I think um, a lot of times murder mysteries, there is a bit of a downer in, in a lot of those things because they do finally come up with who the killer is. And a lot of times you're like, ah, OK, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> um, and so that, they, they do have to wrap that up and everything. And of course, there is a possibility of a second. Se- I think they've even ordered the second season already uh for mm. this but uh you know they they uh they make sure that there's another there's a possibility of a second on this but uh highly recommend it, it sh- at this point uh as i'm talking about it it will have you can you can uh binge this thing so um mm. mm-hmm. uh uh really good stuff and you're gonna I see these guys binge. uh live in a few days aren't you gonna see them live on sunday at the grand Ole opry what yep not Selena Woo-hoo. Gomez, but not Selena <laughs> the Gomez. other two. <laughs> but they would be awesome if she came out and did a bit and then left. Um, uh, but yeah, the yeah, gonna be seeing that. Uh, and uh, Jonathan's coming along with me. Nice, oh, nice. nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm sort of. I don't know if Jonathan knows this, but I'm sort of paying him back because uh, 20 or so years ago, he and his parents, uh, got a ticket for Robin Williams at Grand Ole Opry. Oh, wow. And I uh, got to come along. And of course I was like, I'll pay you back. And of course I was really poor at the time. So I could not pay them back. And they never asked. They never, of course, of course they didn't ask. Right. Mm. But I still feel like, you know, Hey, you know, now that this, this is a great situation that comes up as a kind of a, you know, kind of a payback thing. Nice. Feel like it's a, a good show to pay back on. So, um, nice. uh, so yeah, looking forward to that. That will, that will have been long. I will have long enjoyed that by the time this, this podcast comes out, but all right, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, keep going to uh syncast presented by cinema sins on Facebook. We're also on cinema sins, Twitter, music video, sins, Twitter, discord, and soundcloud. That's going to do it for this episode. It's Chris Atkins and Jeremy Scott and Barrett Share. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Comment on our episodes on our SoundCloud page. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. And be sure to visit cinemasins.com. French Canadian, huh? Yep, French Canadian and Scottish. That's solid.
Uh, you should go up and uh, and and visit those uh, Canadian I have. peasants. Well, I mean, hmm, I visited some graves. We went to Prince Edward Island, um, which is where uh, my cousin's going to listen to this and send me a message telling me how I got it wrong. I'm pretty sure it's my grandmother's side of the family that, well, I can't remember. But in Prince Edward Island... There's this old church that's about to fall over that you used to be able to go inside and now you can't anymore. And out back of that, there's a graveyard and I have some relatives there. Uh, no way. So you went, yeah. did you go with like a, your whole family? Um, it was, I've actually been twice. Um, so, and honestly, bad decisions both times. But my brother went to college. I'm 16. And my parents are like, let's drive to Prince Edward Island, Canada. And so... I have no one to talk to or do anything with my age. Uh, and in Prince Edward Island, there's not a lot to do. Uh, there are, Charlottetown is a nice touristy town with shops and some restaurants. And, and the island has amazing food. But as a 16 year old, uh, other than the times we went golfing, I was bored out of my mind. Um, you did not I, drive from Indiana all the way up there, did you? We did, yeah. Holy fuck. Fuck. Yeah, and now, yeah, and uh, I think I read every Star Trek The Next Generation novel that had ever been written <laughs> You're the only on person. that trip. Um, <clears throat> and then, after I got married, my wife and I went back up um, with my parents. Bad call. Um, and we actually booked this large cabin, so we all stayed in the same cabin that had different bedrooms, but, um, you know, mm. I love my folks, but... Uh, I should not have vacation with them the second year into my marriage. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. But both times I went to the graveyard and uh, paid respects to, um, you know, people I mostly had never heard of until those trips. But that's where my family's from, part half of it. You didn't drive that time, right? No, the second time, well, actually, second time we flew to Boston from Tennessee and then drove, oh, from, drove from Boston all the way up there. Um, I bet that was pretty, though. The drive? Yeah. Oh, it was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. So Until you we went got, through Maine. Uh, we did, yeah. I've never been to Maine. It's one of the few states that I've I've missed. It's beautiful. Uh, but the last, like, I swear to God, like the last hundred miles in the top of Maine before you get to the border is like nothingness. And it was like 10 p.m. when we were driving it, pitch black. And I swear to God, there were moths hitting the windshield the size of birds. And <laughs> <clears throat> it's fucking Stephen King territory right there. Yeah. Now, <laughs> interesting, like... the first time I went, I can tell I'm, I'm probably boring listeners already, but uh, this is outtake fodder anyway. First time I went, you had to take a ferry to get there. Yeah. Um, second time, they had built this bridge that, you know, I, I named. see the bridge. I'm anxiety right bridge. Now. That's what it's called. Um, it looks long as shit. It's the long as shit. bridge. <laughs> it's long as shit. And that's like the problem. Long as that bridge. That's a long-ass bridge. I closed my eyes. I like fetal positioned while dad drove that section, which again, was not smart. My dad's not the best driver. Um, <clears throat> you have a thing with bridges, right? Like, yeah, I that's do. Not your, that's your... I, now, I've driven over the, the, is it the Chesapeake Bay Bridge? I think so. Going. Um, that's pretty. I've done that. It's that's pretty, long. but it's long and high, and I don't like it. Um, and then Chris had to drive. The Golden Gate when we were in San Francisco because I did you guys I you you like that. swapped out right to for Chris to do it or he was I, already driving he was already well, driving I, I drove the whole way yeah but um, we knew before he got into drive that we were going to go over that bridge my that main was, issue was that we were in a van made for four hundred people yeah it was, <laughs> it was huge because we got it on a Sunday just before the Enterprise closed. And they were like, well, this is all we got. And we're like, like a all church right. man or something? Yeah, it looked about uh, that, yeah. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and uh, and um, we wanted to see the mere woods and all that. So, yeah, so we went ahead and got that fucking thing. And then drove all the way there. And there's like this ridiculous traffic pattern in San Francisco where there are left turns over two lanes going the other way that people just constantly pile up to do. 
So it mm. was like this, you know, like I'm sitting there in the left lane and there's like just constantly people stopping to have to turn left and they're not lights or anything. They're just, Oh, oh it's not an actual turn lane. It's just literally. That yeah. Lane. It's, oh, yeah. Right. That left lane is being used for, you know, and, and if you get in the right lane, I get, I mean, it's, it's not much better. It's just, it's just a, you know, it's just a, a long winding road to traffic going to the golden gate and everything. But yeah, I remember being on fucking alert driving over that bridge in yeah. that thing. Just, just you know, I, I, I don't know what it what it was, but just I didn't want to do anything stupid. Because the, the traffic or the bridge or both? The traffic, because there are people who drive over that thing like it's nothing every day. And it's, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and for me, it's the first time. I, I mean, I've walked over it a couple of times, but Did I've never really? driven Jesus, yeah. I would never do that. <clears throat> no, I've, I've walked, I've walked Golden Gate back and forth. Wow, wow. I would look. You wouldn't. So even walking, Jeremy, you wouldn't do. A uh, but wouldn't take more than one Final Destination style <laughs> gust of wind to send me over the edge of that fucking thing. I am not fucking around. Mm-hmm. I'll take a boat underneath and wave at you while you guys are up there but i just made sure that i stayed in a lane and and yeah. drove a decent speed and then when he got over it you know everything was fine but um i just didn't want to get into a situation where i, I had to change lanes or do anything yeah. out of the you know and it's not out of the ordinary to change lanes but you know what i mean i've been to san francisco i don't think we drove over the golden gate we saw it uh, i don't think we drove over it um, but I would imagine like I'd, I'd be looking out the window and trying to, man, we went to Kings Island and went to the top of the replica, uh, Eiffel tower. And when I was like nine and I cried and cried until they took me in the elevator and took me back down. Is it a heights thing or a bridge thing or both? It's a heights thing. Yeah. It's a falling thing. When we went to, in college, we went to the Sears tower and I didn't want to bitch out because I, I, my girl that I liked was there. The group of us went up, and I literally squatted on the floor right next to the elevator the entire time we were up oh, there. Oh, you didn't go and do the Ferris wheel or something? Uh, it, it was, I could feel it swaying. Like, yeah, they told me I'd be able to. And and I yeah. was noping the fuck out. <clears throat> there is something about it, man. You go, I, that, that, I went in, you know, whatever, 2015 or whatever it was, and and uh, got into that little glass box that they let you go into where you yeah. see where it's where everything is. There's nothing underneath Ooh. you and everything. And I and you you're always like, am I going to be the one that you know, <laughs> snack, cracks this motherfucker? Um, did, did I tell you that that happened? No, did it? So I was uh, on the, the train going to work one day and open up the the free paper that i read every day and they showed a a big old picture of a bunch of frat dudes got in there no, and no, i no, guess no, no, jumped no, no, no. and it shattered it Did didn't fall? obviously fall no 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 it didn't it, it's so reinforced it, yeah it i don't like think a yeah nuke to, to actually get through it. right i don't but think it would, it would go through yeah uh, <laughs> i was like whoa but still <laughs> even with that even with the fact that you know that you go in, you go into that, and it's like, holy shit! Look at the fuck! Like this is you're you're in midair with just glass around you. Yeah, um, that was the most surprising thing to me of uh, in, in the Grand Canyon trip that I took a couple years ago was how many places are accessible and not and not like they're like, hey, don't go here. They're they're pretty much just like, hey, whatever you want to do, what you want to do. Um, they're just accessible places where you can just, if you just aren't paying attention, you will fall. You will fall to your death. Yeah. I'd be headlines once or twice a year. That's why that, the, the one picture he sent to everybody on Slack of his daughter and his wife near the edge, I, I almost bugged out. I was like, that's, mm-hmm. that's how people die, dude. Go get that kid. I was <laughs> right over that thing, man. I could not help myself. I was going to get the best picture I could. Just getting oh, over that thing. Jesus. I like I got, the Grandfather I, Mountain when we were up there. I, I showed you the, the picture of me at the summit. There was no rail or anything around. Mm. And it was not an easy walk to get out there. <laughs> you just kind of, all right. Nah. Yeah. Be nah. careful. No. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, I got his, I got, I got, I did that whole like shimmy close to the edge type of mm-hmm. thing where it's like, all right, my feet are in good spot. 
and then looked over and then I saw there's some little, you know, there, Grand Canyon has a lot of these little spots where you can like, it's it got a little incline of some sort and you could walk down. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Cause it's not, it's not like stair steps. It's like fucking dusty. Path. Yeah. <laughs> and there are people who are doing it and good for them uh, <laughs> and, and taking pictures and all that. And I'm, you know, I'm like, you can see the Canyon. It's right there. You don't have to get any closer. Right. You can't miss it. It's right fucking there. Man. I know. Turn around, man. I get it every once in a while. When we were at, uh, did you go with us, Chris, when we went up to the top of the uh, Eiffel Tower? Um uh empire state building when we were up there the first time mm, i don't think so but i have been at the top of the empire state building that one that one got me because it's open air like sears tower at least you're not mm-hmm. out in the open and so like when it does sway and when the wind's really blowing like you can fucking oh feel you get blown <laughs> you get blown oh no 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 <laughs> so the google pixel 6 is announced announcing right now Mm. which I'm sure I think Dicer is probably going to buy and um, I want to buy, but the Google store is broken. Wow. wow. Oh, wait, there it is. Huh? All right. Yeah, I'll you're wait till I, you're going to buy it right now. Like, you no, I'm going to wait. No, nope. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I also need to do more research because there's two versions and the one is slightly larger and has a slightly curved screen, which would be a new thing for me, but it's also got um, a telephoto lens and the smaller mm. does not have a telephoto lens. Mm. Um, so it's got like a, a natural, I think four times optical zoom on the bigger one. And I'm like, maybe I, they're both over six inches. So I think I'm just going to have to get a big phone either way. But one of these days we'll be able to buy one of those pixels and uh, it would be able to see uh, it'll be like the Hubble. (laughs) Well, I mean, you're you're joking, but eventually I think that's where it goes. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, if you'd have told me 20 years ago that we'd be carrying around these computers casually in our pockets um yeah i wouldn't have believed you and the, my phone my current pixel which is a four not even the five i can tilt it up at the night sky and it can take a picture of all these stars my eyeballs can't even see mm-hmm. yeah, you got a good mm-hmm. camera on that motherfucker so yeah. it's just a matter of time like it'll be it'll be put it in hubble mode and you have to like throw it up into the air to give it just that extra little oomph and then it takes a picture of like you know pluto and- mm-hmm. um i'm having to read this off my phone and like every two seconds there's a new slack that comes down on the fucking thing. yeah but it's the new pixel that they're all talking about that i'm excited about that i decided not to buy until after the podcast that's <laughs> right Jer- <laughs> jeremy has the restraint not to buy a pixel six during the during the podcast and we I commend do. him for that thank you it, my next rant is going to be how menus on anything are so fucking hard to navigate. Did I, yeah. Did I tell you, Jeremy, that uh, my wife had the exact same problem as your wife did with the Amazon thing, except that it wasn't in Spanish. She had somehow made us Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> so she was like, why are we ordering from Canada? Why is this so much more? So different? I've heard the Amazon in Can- in Canada, like the checkout button says, check out a. Eh? With a question? Yeah, mark? no, it's, it says check out. Check out? Check out. Oh, yeah. nice. Hey, Chris, did I tell you, my brother and I put up one of my disc golf baskets down in the front yard. and Oh, yeah? We picked different tee spots throughout the yard and played with his kids. It was fun. Oh, man, I bet that was awesome. I keep uh, fantasizing about my yard being bigger than it is and me being able to do anything yeah. disc golf related. You, you could practice putting and that's about it. Yeah, I could stick one in the backyard somewhere. I could do it in the front yard too, but that's tacky, I think. When you put it in the mm. backyard somewhere, I could probably find ways to do it, but I would also know that hitting that hitting the chains of that basket would be annoying to my neighbors after a while. <laughs> you could put it in your front yard and then the mail person can just chuck the mail. Yeah, can throw the, the mail in the in the chains. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Allie, how old was um Rachel McAdams when that came out, do you think? 
26. When did Mean Girls come out? That was right around 2000. Uh, 2000 no, wait a minute. Yeah, 2000, 2004. Came out in 2004 as well. So, same year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Rachel so McAdams she's... was born in 1978. And uh, yeah, she played these, she could still play uh, high school girls pretty easily back then. Because Lindsay Lohan was still fairly young. Lindsay then, Lohan right? was actually high school age. When that yeah, yeah, out. yeah. So she's playing against, uh, yeah, Rachel McAdams. Amanda Seyfried was probably still pretty young at that point. Right? Amanda Seyfried was, I think she was born in 85. So she was 19 when that movie came out. Uh, I think Lacey Chabert, oh, Lacey right. Chabert was, uh, was also probably 18 when the movie came out. Oh, really? Because okay. cause she was in Party of Five, and I think she was a teenager in Party of Five. Um, and then Mean Girls came out. And yeah, she's, she was still high school age, I think. Did you ever watch Party of Five? I never caught that. No, just no, I, I did. never did. I, never I did. I did. I did. So that was uh, Jay Love, right? Jennifer Love Hewitt was mm-hmm. in that? Mm-hmm. She yep. wasn't one of the... St- family members but she was a uh, girlfriend of guy from go scott wolf um, yeah scott, scott wolf, wolf was the main the main scott character. well um the whole family basically like um, matt fox and nev campbell and scott wolf and then the younger one was it nev uh, campbell yeah the younger mm-hmm. one was uh Lacey shabir yeah there you Lang. go <laughs> is I it totally shabir i thought it was shabir i think i said shabir or Chabert. It's from the Chabert. Chabert. Um, yeah. In Georgia, was, it's Chabert. Yeah, exactly. She was uh, the first Meg Griffin until Mila, Mila Kunis uh, replaced her. Oh, I didn't know that. I knew that there had been an original. Mm hmm. And yeah, then when a famous, you first, famous original. <laughs> yeah. When you watch the first season of Family Guy, Meg has this very simple voice like this all the way through it. And then she turns into the obvious Mila Kunis voice later on the second season. But I don't know. I don't think I've ever heard the reasons why, whether they just thought she wasn't right for it. She didn't have the, she didn't have the comic timing or she didn't want to do it anymore. I don't know. I've never heard the reason why she was replaced. So. Yeah, She's worth either. a lot more than Ashton Kutcher, right? Mila Kunis? No. no. Ashton no. Kutcher is the one who is worth, probably i mean he 10, turned in, times over he turned really? investor yeah he's got money in i guarantee you he's got money in apps you've heard of or use um interesting look it up there, there oh, was so an interview he's, he's diversified i guess there's an interview with mila kunis where she was like she was, she was like he would always come to me with these ideas that he had heard about or whatever and he was going to invest in and i was like no fucking way i'm not going to do this shit and uh and he goes he goes and 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 the uh, the apps were like uber um <laughs> <laughs> oh jesus christ yeah, yeah he owns he as a co-founder of a venture capital firm in addition to having backed at least five different startups um he's been on um shark tank too he's been yep one of those guys had no idea wow Good for, mm-hmm. he's, good for he's him. savvy savvy yeah, he really is he really is i mean if you're wondering why you haven't seen ashton kutcher like doing much acting uh lately it's because well he makes way more doing the smart investment shit that yeah. he's not savvy his- with his acting choices uh, yeah although what happened I, in vegas is i'm legitimately surprised they haven't announced a uh, dude where's my car too right like with everything else getting surprise sequels and reunions what the hell is uh stifler doing these days come right. on come they on could back. Also, well he's yeah probably i mean he's probably the, the he's, inventor of bitcoin he's he's in the he's in the middle of all that though that goon series he's like done oh, like that's three right. of those um but like uh yeah i mean that'd be great you could get jennifer garner back to play the girl one of the girlfriends yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. i can see it how have you know that by waiting to buy my phone after this podcast, I have missed my chance. They are now all out of stock. Oh, shit. But first world problems. I didn't get the brand new 
eight hundred dollar Google phone on the day it launched. Boo hoo! My phone's working fine. Mm-hmm. I'll get it eventually when they restock. Mm-hmm. Just... It's not like there's nothing. It's not like you there's anything you can't do right now that you would do if you had it. That's correct. I mean, it's, it, there's some obviously some awesome features on that, but it makes your yeah. pictures look awesomer. Is all. I can still uh, take pictures with this phone. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. right. And your and your Pixel Four looks pretty fucking awesome. It does. It does. You've taken pictures just, uh, of space that are fucking amazing. That's true. I'll slow my roll. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not. It's not the sky. It's space. It's space. <laughs>